and welcome to The Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hertz, and today we're gonna answer a viewer question. So our viewer and friend Ginger wrote in asking a really important question uh, about positioning. She writes, when standing in the quote correct position, how do you recommend clients and how to release or not squeeze the butt cheeks? We think we're not doing it, but 90% of people seem to be doing it automatically. Ginger, this is a really great question and it is something that we really deeply need to address within our clientele and also within ourselves because standing work is some of the most important important work that we do in the studio. A lot of times we explore lots of different planes of gravity, supine work to help people organize differently, but if it doesn't all come up into upright, our clients aren't getting that translation from the cues in the Pilates studio to when they walk out the door and live the rest of their lives. And it's really important that our clients do think about how they're organizing in space, um, how they can efficiently move every day of their lives so they can preserve their joint mobility, stay out of pain, and stay happily as active as that they would like to be. Now, glute and hip gripping is so prevalent in our culture. Uh, we're no longer going into really deep squats anymore, um, whether it's in birthing, going to the restroom, or simply just sitting. We're usually going into chairs, stools, benches, um, to bed, back to our desk chair. So we're not getting all of those really nice hip and sitting bone openings and deep flexion at the front of the hip um, that really helps to palpate our deep lymphatics in our lower pelvis. Now, that being said, most people, when they're sitting down, they're either sitting right on their sitting bones or behind them in that kind of posterior pelvic tilt, that glute grip that we see, which pushes the femur heads forward into an area of the acetabulum that doesn't have as much um, uh, innate integrity. It's like that all of that tissue at that front of that hip joint is actually naturally a little bit thinner than at the back. Now, your clients, you're right. They don't sense that they're gripping there. I call that, they have, a habitual resting tissue tension. So it's tension that they have no idea that they've been hoarding for days, weeks, years, decades. So what we need to do is a little bit of simple release work to get them to feel that they're actually gripping and to know what letting go feels like. Then we can use a little bit, some tools for some standing work to really translate um, all of that beautiful Pilates work again into, into vertical posture. Posture. So first things first is I'm going to take um, this Great Dane tennis ball. We really love to use this in the studio. You can use lots and lots of different uh, techniques and tricks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get onto the floor here. I'm going to place this underneath the glute and I'm going to start to roll up, down, side to side on all of this tissue. I can even do some movements here. I'm really staying on the glute, not on the bones of the sacrum, not on the ilium. I can get towards this uh, sitting bone, that's fine, but we're really trying to unstick that tissue at the back and side of the pelvis, right? So that point, your clients can feel like, oh, I had no idea how tense that was. It feels different now. We were just recently at the PMA and our friends at a company called Not Out, really cool company, has some of the greatest release work stuff that we've seen in a while. It's really, really phenomenal, coming in all different shapes and sizes. You'll be seeing them in some upcoming episodes, but this is phenomenal for rolling out the glute. It's stable because they're put together. There's um, a couple different consistencies. I'm using the tougher one, but this is really, really great to help open up the outside of the hip so that our clients can really get in touch with how they're gripping. Now, phase two, what I would do is do the, a little bit more of like the interior of the pelvis, right? So you can do Mikasa ball sitting. So you find a stool or on the reformer and you have them sit on the Mikasa ball like they're laying an egg, 
right? You can even do some gentle pelvic movements, some breath work, as long as this is appropriate for their pelvic floor. So that means that they don't have a prolapse, they're not immediately postpartum, and they have no pelvic floor dysfunction. This is perfect for them. It's helping to spread the sitting bones wide, open the tailbone up, find lots of unctuous space in the pelvic floor. It also helps to bring the top of the ilium and sacrum together to give lots of stability at the base of the spine. Once they do some breath patterns there, they sit down, they feel a really big difference between before and after on the outside and on the inside of the pelvis. This is where I would then take them into standing position. And so they're gonna stand up, they're gonna feel how different their body feels. Um, and what I try to tell people to do is preserve that Mikasa ball feeling on the inside of the pelvis while we do the standing work. They just got off the ball, they have that sense memory, and so it can immediately translate to the next part. Now, this yoga block can be very handy too. I'm gonna to show you front ways. What you do is you have them get their feet a little wider than sitting bone distance apart. You have them open the knees, place the yoga block at their upper inner thighs, and then from there they're going to straighten out. What this does is it helps to internally rotate the femurs high up, which does give that bone rhythm signal of extension at the front of the hip. It also makes it really difficult to squeeze the tush cheeks in the back. It kind of maintains that space that we're supposed to have between our femurs, our pubic bone, and our tailbone. Now, if I bring it into standing work, again, I find my placement, I place the yoga block, I straighten the legs. Again, that's internal rotation of the femurs, nice bone rhythm for hip extension. Sitting bones are wide into the side. Fingertips can go onto the wall. And what I usually have people do is experiment with releve here with the yoga block, feeling like they're not gonna spit the yoga block forward, but they're allowing the yoga block to feel like it's gonna travel in back of the body. This helps people really find their first ray, that spot between their big toe joint and second toe joint on this lift and lower. And you're gonna see and have lots of different things to cue. They're gonna throw their heart forward, they're gonna lead with their head, they might lead with their pelvis. And what we're really trying to do is get, well, as the calcaneus lifts, it helps to lift the crown of the head keeping that nice opening at the front of the hip and no squeezing at the level of the sitting bones. That's it for today. If you have an observation or question that you'd like to see answered on an upcoming episode, you can comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or a forum. See you next time and never stop learning.